This week, the Music Biz Weekly Podcast, we sit down with Cameo.com. We get all the insight as to what Cameo has been up to and what they're doing, including a brand new feature called Cameo Live that they just rolled out. You need to check this out because everybody should be using Cameo. Welcome to the Music Biz Weekly Podcast, founded in 2011 and with over 500 weekly episodes, where Michael Brandvold and Jay Gilbert, two longtime music industry pros, discuss the very latest trends, tools, and tactics that you need to succeed in this new... Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How you doing, Jay? Great, Mike. Good to see you. So before we get into uh, actually a pretty freaking cool conversation uh, about Cameo yeah. and all the cool things they're doing, yeah. Um, I want to just make a real quick mention of uh, thanking Bruce and everybody at Hypebot and Bands in Town for your continued support. And of course, inviting everybody to visit us over at the artist community on Bands in Town. Easy to remember, easy to get to. Just go to bandsintown.musicbizweeklypodcast.com. 100% free to join. Super easy. Great discussions go on there every week about the episode of that week. Sometimes mm -hmm. we post some interesting news tidbits. Um, it's a great way to pick the brains of other musicians and other artists out there. So come over, join us at the Bands in Town Artist Community. Um, but of course, I want to do a big shout out to our two sponsors, Banzoogle.com, built by musicians for musicians. Banzoogle is an all-in-one platform that makes it very easy to build a beautiful website and EPK for your music. Banzoogle powers the websites for tens of thousands of musicians around the world, from weekend warriors to Grammy winners. All the features you need for a professional website are already built in, including hosting any custom domain name. Dozens of fully customizable design templates, tools to sell your music and merch commission-free, commission-free crowdfunding and fan subscription features, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, social media integrations, and of course, amazing live tech support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. We got a great offer that we put together for all of our listeners. Head over to bandzoogle.com, sign up. Try it for free for 30 days. And when you register, use this promo code. It's all one word now, no spaces. Promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY. And you will save up to 15% off the first year of any subscription. And of course, DiscMakers.com. We know it's a digital world, but there's still an important role for physical media for today's musicians. Digital royalty payments can be so small that selling products like CD, vinyl, T-shirts, online and at gigs has become such an important income generator. For every CD you sell at a gig, you might need roughly 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money. That's a lot of streams. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even T-shirts. So another great offer we put together. Head over to DiscMakers.com. Place an order for 100 or more CDs. And when you check out, use the promo code FREEBIZ, all one word, FREEBIZ, and you'll save up to $150 in shipping costs. Jay, Cameo is joining us. What's Cameo is joining us. You know what? I am so excited for this conversation. I've been looking forward to it for weeks. We have Adam Ramos, uh, who's the head of Music Partnerships. But we talk about music, but much more, um, just all of the innovations and all of the great things that are happening over there at uh, Cameo. And if you're not on Cameo, you should be. Yeah. As you, as you said in the in the interview, Jay, it's not your grandma's Cameo anymore. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so let it roll and we'll see you at Thousands the end. of musicians and industry professionals listen to the Music Biz Weekly podcast. If you have a product or service and would like to reach this audience. Get in touch with Michael or Jay to discuss sponsorship opportunities. Today, we're joined by Adam Ramos, who is the head of music partnerships at Cameo. Lots to talk about today, Adam. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I mean, Cameo is just this beast now. I remember when it kind of started off and there was a handful of these things and it was interesting and it started growing. Now it's like 
all of my favorite athletes are on there, you know, uh, movie stars and TV stars. And of course, music, which is near and dear to our hearts. And uh, Mike here is even on on Cameo. Yeah. With thanks, his three thanks, sides uh, of the coin. Th th thanks to Adam. We got three sides of the coin set up on Cameo and we're doing donations to the go Warrior one, Project. I'm doing it. Yeah. They're top tier. Um, I will say I've, I've watched them and I'm 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 from I'm seen lots of cameos of my time here and i'm a big fan of the three sides of the coin cameo. we, we so, have oh, fun doing them. i mean you got to have fun doing cameos right i mean i i think that's the that's part of what cameo is it's got to be fun and very personable Absolutely. you know the, the best one that i've seen so far i i ordered this for my dad for his birthday it was the soup nazi from seinfeld and he goes in character you know no soup for you and my dad is such a big seinfeld fan that like I won the, you know, the kid lottery there, you know, like I'm in the will. You, now. you, you became the favorite son. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Nailed that's it. A cameo. That's the cameo magic. You call yeah. that superpower. And it's, you know, and that's, again, I think you already nailed like two of the pillars of our brand, which is like number one, like make it fun. Like everything we do, we approach it with levity. I think, you know, we are nothing, you know, but the, the most fun moments you can have with you know your friends, your family, you know, interacting with folks. And I think, you know, that's always going to be a core of what we do. I mean, we do so much, but I think keeping it fun is always, you know, so integral <laughs> and also making it memorable. Like I think yeah. you know, both of those are both two things we say every day and, um, you know, creating these moments that you'll, you'll remember forever. I mean, you can give somebody a gift, you know, yeah. put it in the mail, whatever, but getting that moment where, you know, your favorite person ever is talking to you. It's, it's just awesome. And, you know, yeah. quick story, like I think the favorite cameo I've ever gotten, uh, I got my dad a, a Cashman cameo. It's like the general manager of the Yankees. He's Yankee. Oh fans my gosh. Talking. He could not believe it. You know, he knew I'd, I'd been working at cameo, knew what the product was, everything, but he, you know, it wasn't until he was staring at this cameo where Cashman is talking to him about this Yankee season and thanking him for being a fan where he almost cried. Like I, oh, I, I haven't really seen my dad cry. It was like the closest <laughs> I've ever gotten. It's just kind of mind blowing. Well, a Adam, let me, before we talk about some of the new stuff that Cameo's got going on, um, and, and Jay, maybe you've encountered this too, but I know when I've worked with artists and, I, and I'm and i like, all right, you guys need, you're looking for revenue streams. You got to seriously look at Cameo. I mean, it's easy. Or it's, it, it, I mean, it's just stupid easy to do. Uh, but the number one hurdle I encounter, and I'm sure you've heard this, and, and I'd like to get your take on how you um, overcome the hurdle are the artists who are like cameo isn't that where you go when your career's over Absolutely. you know kind of like you go to san diego comic-con and you know the back three rows of the has-beens who are doing the autographs and the selfies because their show was 50 years ago right that's that's obviously not the case if anybody spends any time looking at cameo it's not the case but how do you overcome that objection and let me just add really quickly adam that the other side of that that i hear once in a while and not so much anymore was that it they, they thought of it as maybe a little bit pandering you know and then i think i'll let you answer the question but it seemed as though maybe in the early days that was a, a perception that you had to overcome yeah absolutely and I, I think you're right you know this is something that we hear a lot and you know i think in some ways it's we're a victim of our own success i think you know we exploded so quickly and there were certain folks that were the forefront of that that you know maybe weren't necessarily um you know the, the you know, they weren't the best people to showcase the, our entire talent base right and so i think that's you know that's what happened early and I, we're still trying to overcome it like you said but you know, there's a lot of ways to go about answering it i mean in the short of it it's like well just look at our roster i mean you see folks like John Bon Jovi and Smokey Robinson, Dionne Warwick, Shaka Khan, Dave Mustaine, you know, really, really legendary yeah. acts in music that, you know, while some will come on and do short stints, like, you know, Bon Jovi came on and he raised for his foundation. Um, he was on for about two days. He did like 150K for his foundation. Wow. That's impressive. Two hours. Yeah. And just about, took him about two hours to record all the messages. He did it like in the car on the way to a gig. Um, so you have folks like that doing it too, but then you have folks like Smokey Robinson, who's on constantly doing them. Dave Mustaine is doing them all the time. Uh, you know, the, the, the list goes on and on and on. And even, you know, more contemporary names like Chris Stapleton, Lil Nas X, uh, Haley Kyoko, or, you know, they, it's really, really a, just an expansive lineup. Folks have taken in many different directions. Yeah. You know? from short-term stints to charity plays to using other products. 
um, you know, the network that we've got that we've built over the past, you know, three, four years now um, really, you know, speaks for itself. And I think that's always what I lean in. It's just kind of showing examples like, you know, here's a fan looking at a, uh, you know, Dave Mustaine cameo, for instance, or you know, Dave comes on, he's hamming it up and he's mm-hmm. talking to the fan and the fan is just crying. And it's like, yes, you know, there's a cameo is a lot of things, but at the end of the day, it's, it's this, it's that moment you're going to have with a fan that you couldn't have otherwise. Um, yeah. It's authentic. It's fun. And it's a great revenue stream. Like you said, you know, so many artists, you know, when the pandemic happened, it was a much easier play, right? Like now they had all this time, they were sitting around, um, they needed revenue. It was kind of a perfect storm. And, you know, we did see lots of musicians come on, you know, from ev- across all different genres, um, use it as their main revenue stream. And, you know, pe- people you'd never expect, like, you know, Kathleen Hanna from Bikini Kill, like some of the most street cred, cool musicians um, yeah. are coming on here. And, you know, sure, maybe maybe that there's a, there's a bit of levity in their approach, right? It's a little bit of goofy. Like I said, making it fun is always what we do. But, um, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, I've, I've never seen an artist come on and fans have been upset about it. You know, fans are... Yeah were ubiquitous enough that they know what the platform is, how to, how to interact with it. Maybe they've gotten one before. Um, you know, I, I love folks like, like Laura Jane Grace from against me is like a really good example. She pumps them out. I mean, she does probably like, you know, 20 to 30 a week and they're all heartfelt. You know, she's playing guitar in them. They're really, really wow. cool. Um, and so, you know, there's just this bank of amazing talent, amazing videos that have already been out there. And, uh, you know, I think it's just showcasing that and just educating. I mean, I think that's like the biggest part of my job is just, you know, letting managers and musicians know that, you know, you may have one perception in your head about something, but, you know, if you really look into it and you really just trust me in this process, not only will you make money, but, you know, the process is super enjoyable. It's super manageable. It's always on your schedule. Uh, and it's fun. Like we, we always send the reactions, you know, oftentimes cameos are given as gifts, right? It's like 80% of them are gifts. So we'll prompt the person who purchased it to record the reaction of the the fans who are opening it up, uh, <laughs> watching it. And, you know, artists just can't get enough of it. It's like a bit of that ego thing, right? It's like to just know that, you know, maybe you're, you know, Jack Russell from Great White, that, you know, maybe you haven't been around your fans so much and it's been tough to kind of interact with people abroad or whatever it is. But having that moment where, you know, there's still people out there that are going to cry just to hear them yeah. hear you say their name. I'm a sucker for those reaction videos myself. I mean, I can't get enough of them. I think they're they're awesome. I think you guys kind of reached a, a tipping point, at least in my mind, when I started seeing artists. It wasn't just Facebook, Twitter, Instagram on their website or smart URL. All of a sudden, I started seeing that Cameo logo appear places. And I went, you know what? This is hitting the mainstream. This is going uh, big time. And I think what you just described is, if you went on early when Cameo launched, you may have one perception of what the platform is, but just like everything, it's evolved and changed inside of the pandemic, outside of the pandemic, and just the breadth of no matter what you're into, <laughs> there's somebody in there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, across every genre, right? I mean, and we had early adopters too, like like Snoop Dogg was somebody who came on early, like Ice-T as well. And like, you know, they, they understood the value sort of intrinsically of what this platform meant, you know, outside of the perception of what it was or how people kind of thought of it. Um, and Snoop, you know, he would go on and he, he'd do like limited stints. He'd probably, you know, I think he started probably like at 420. I think then he went to like 750 and now he's like at a thousand bucks, but you know, he'll open up like a hundred spots. Of course he started know, at 420. Limited. Of course. Yeah. You have, there's all, again, make it fun. Right. Yep. Um, and so, you know, he'll, he'll do them all. And you know, he, he, he was up to like 2 million before really we kind of took off uh, as a platform. And, you know, and so I think just him, you know, he would go to his buddies and be like, whatever you think about this, like, just look at my phone, like, look at these earnings here. And I think that was part of it too, was like the proof was in the pudding. And like you said too, at a certain point, it became mainstream enough, especially within certain genres, you know, a lot of my energy is spent within like rock, emo, punk, uh, metal, those types of genres I just love working with because such strong fan bases. We have such good names, like guys like Chuck Billy and, you know, across every major um, genre, like I said, but um, at a certain point we were kind of, it it became less of, um, you know, not going to do it and more of not right now. And I think right now that's a big part of what I do is, you know, just providing the why to artists, why now? So for instance, like Jolie Turner is coming on um, from like Deep Purple and Rainbow. He's launching tomorrow. I was just talking to his his manager today, and you know he's 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 revamping his image. He, he's been away for a little while. He's had some health problems. He's he's coming back, and he's um, you know launching a new album. And you know we're using that opportunity to launch his cameo and just provide fans that access to him that 
um, he hasn't been able to provide in the past. And so, you know, he's super excited. Of course, he'll make revenue in the short term, but um, he'll get at that moment, you know, where he's kind of practicing what it's like to be back in front of your fans and be back on tour. And, you know, a lot of artists aren't doing meet and greets these days. So, you know, having this extra component here, both from a revenue standpoint and a fan engagement standpoint can mean a lot for guys. Well, before we move on to the meet and greet thing here, because that actually kind of ties into a new product that Cameo is, is just announcing. Um, how many of the of the artists on Cameo are actually tied in and doing this for charity? Because, you know, that's how I, I'm doing it with the Three Sides of the Coin podcast, but it's also a great way to get over the begging for money, the perception that you're begging for money. My guy, you know, oh, John Bon Jovi, you're, you're a multimillionaire. What do you need this for? Well, to your point, he raised $150,000 for his charity. Is that a big component for what artists are doing now? Is there like, you know what? I don't, I don't need this revenue. It's not going to change my day-to-day life, but boy, I could raise a lot of money for a great cause. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Charity is a big part of it. I think, you know, and again, even within, you know, charitable engagements, there's a huge spectrum of how people kind of use it. Right. So um, there's, there's, you know, uh, tech right built into the app. So you can donate a percentage directly from your earnings. So folks will do that. You know, they'll maybe have, you know, we have hundreds of charity partners. Um, we've done charity drives ourselves for you know specific causes like backline, which is a really good mental health charity within the music industry. Um, you know, charities that we work with specifically that we can suggest if they're looking for that extraness to, you know, square up the optics or just do some good, you know, um, you know, that's always a big part of it. We have artists that come on, they'll do like, you know, 25% to charity, 10% to charity, 50% to charity, all the way up to hundred percent to charity. And again, what that looks like could be super different. So like, for instance, uh, during the pandemic, Chase Rice, who's a country musician came on and he donated all of his proceeds to his road crew. So the guys that, you know, oh, he, wow. would be, he would be, you know, paying if they were touring, but couldn't. So use his cameo for that. Super cool. Um, you know, then we have folks that like, like Amanda Palmer came on uh, and she raised for the Biden campaign. We actually have a, 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 a official partnership with Act Blue, um, And so, you know, folks can come on, especially with this next round of elections coming up, can actually come on and raise for their favorite political party as well. Um, and it's, you know, all done through the app. It's super easy. They just kind of come on. Money goes that way. Then, you know, then you have folks like Lily Allen came on. She used her cameo funds, not necessarily charity, but she used her funds to fund an independent record. She didn't want to, you know, be with her record label anymore. And decided, you know, I could fund a record um, by doing cameo videos and and actually, you know, participating with my fans and, and funding it that way. So, oh yeah, that's it, that's interesting. I never, I never kind of thought of cameo as being a crowdfunding, yeah, platform. Absolutely. But it, it definitely, it definitely would work so easily that way. And and frankly, a lot of the the back end hurdles of crowdfunding are are removed. It's like the fan gets their immediate reward, which is a video and you get the funds Absolutely. immediately. I mean, un, un, unlike that old pledge music fiasco where it went into quote escrow and then you never saw the money. It, yep. Money is paid out right away. There's no wait. There's no delay. It's super easy. I mean, that's part of the, the allure. Another great example. I did just like this past month, I've been working with uh, Randy Blythe from Lamb of God. He, uh, he came on, he has so much fun with it. His cameos are hilarious. He does like little improv in his cameos. We just, he just totally made it his own. Um, fans absolutely love it. He kept it on the more reasonable side too. He does a lot of them. He used all of his cameo funds to purchase or to fund an entire deforestation project in Ecuador. Um, wow. He used to go out to Ecuador. I'll send you the video. It's awesome. But that's amazing. He would go to Ecuador and he, he, would, he loved being out there and he would surf with his buddies and, you know, notice there are these issues with, you know, forestation coming in and encroaching on the land. Um, and so he was able to use all of his funds to purchase this like huge swath of land within Ecuador to keep it preserved. Um, and that's like what he did with his cameo funds that, you know, he probably in the past, like, you know, year, year and a half. And so again, like, you know, I think it's just changing the perception a little bit too about it. It's like, yes, um, you know, maybe bringing in a charity will help, you know, make the medicine go down a little bit for the artist. But the reality is like, every, you know, music is a business and, and whether you're selling, you know, you know, the, the 1000th t-shirt or you're selling a real intimate cameo from yourself, the reality is like, 
it's just revenue that's produced by you being an artist. And so I think, again, a lot of that, those questions around selling out and, and, you know, that perception, it, it really just exists on sort of the artist side in their head until yeah. they're actually on, you know, providing value to their fans, seeing that value of the fan losing their mind, um, you know, and, and then also, you know, if they use some of the money for good, then that's great too, but, you know, completely up to them. We're here to support them. We're here to make the technology yeah. as easy as possible so they can do you know, whatever they want with it. Let's, let's talk about the economics just a, a little bit of, sure. of how you make your money and what, you know, what the artists get to keep. And then does that change at all based on the type of cameo it is, whether it's a political contribution or to a charity or whatever, talk a little bit about the economics. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really straightforward and that's kind of, you know, definitely one of the highlights of the platform is uh, it's a, it's a flat 75, 25 cut. So artist comes on, they set their own price. It's completely up to them. They can change that price whenever they want. Uh, and they'll keep 75% on the cameos that they do. So the 25 goes to us. That just keeps the lights on for us and kind of keeps the engine running. Um, but they get to keep 75 and that price I said is completely up to them too. So, you know, we'll provide data around like what's an effective price. What have, you know, similar artists oh. have done. Um, we can look at, you know, if they, if once they're on, we can kind of look at like what their page is converting at or, you know, stuff like that to kind of help inform like what's a good price. But, you know, the reason, the reality is like, we're extremely artist focused, you know, whatever the motivation is for the artist, that's totally cool with us. You know, we have some artists that, you know, maybe they, it takes a lot to, to get them into that, to the mindset, to be able to do a cameo. And, you know, that requires them to charge a little bit more. Totally. Okay. If you want to justify it that way on the opposite side, you know, guys like, Gary Holt's a really good example. I think his cameos are like 25 bucks and he's been doing them for like years. I mean, he's he made so much at this point, but he loves doing them and, you know, they're easy for him. Sure. Um, you know, for the artists, they get a teleprompter on screen with all the information for the request. Um, and so it's super duper easy. They just kind of open up their phone. The app is really user friendly. They click on the request they want to do. They see all the info there on screen. It records them as they're looking at the message. Average cameo is a minute and then it sends out right from there. And we don't charge the fan until they do the message. So, um, you know, there's never an obligation to do any cameo. It's always up to the artists. If they want to do it, they're able to kind of see what the request is first. Um, they have the ability to make it public or private. So private means it'll just be sent directly to the fan. Public, it kind of lives on their profile for other folks to kind of check out. So they can oh, Very cool. But yeah, it's now, super flexible. It's super easy. From, from a pricing standpoint, you've got, kind of two tiers of pricing you've got a personal and a business pricing can you explain the difference there yeah absolutely so really interesting actually um i'd say about two years ago we had a, a, a car dealership reach out to us and say look like we love cameo we think they're super fun um we'd love to book one from brett Favre, but we want it for our business and you know we want to use it for you know just online advertising something like that we love the idea. We didn't quite know how to make it happen. We just kind of put our heads together and we decided, okay, we come up with some different terms. We create a new button on the profile. I think we can facilitate these. And so we rolled it out with Brett. He absolutely loved it. He loved being able to do these like little mini commercials, like just like he's doing the fan videos, you know, usually the same length of time, about a minute record on the phone. There's like no hair and makeup. He doesn't have to fly out to Waukesha, nice. Wisconsin. He could just do it right from his phone, wherever he is. Um, so he did really well with it. Um, we started rolling it out to more folks. And then eventually I would say maybe, maybe a year ago, a year ago or more, um, we rolled out to everybody. So now when you come on Cameo, you have the option to set that business price as well. Um, you know, each, every day, it feels like we're getting more sophisticated. There's a couple of different prices. Now you can set for different types of business requests, um, get in the weeds, but it's like mostly, you know, different, we figured out what businesses want. A lot of times it's like internal messages to pump up a sales team or, Maybe your company's doing like a webinar with all the company and they want some sort of fun, you know, bit in the middle, like, you know, air supply coming in and doing a really funny message to the company <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Um, so now they set that price and they're able to generate revenue that way. Um, typically we find folks will set it, you know, five to seven, five to seven times what a normal fan video would be is typically what they charge for the business ones. But again, completely up to the artist. They don't have to offer it if they don't want to, but you know, if they are looking for that stream, we can help. Um, and Cameo for Business is actually its own department now within Cameo. Um, it's become super sophisticated. We're doing tons of outbound to different companies and, you know, coming up wow. with creative and different ways to supply talent. Um, and now, you know, folks who are doing like bespoke deals, we do private bookings. Um, we do like large brand campaigns now where we're supplying all the talent. We just closed a deal with Snapchat. So now if anyone wants to advertise talent on Snapchat or have talent in their advertisements on Snapchat, we're going to be the partner for that. So nice. huge business for us. It's another huge incentive to be on the platform because, you know, you'll come on and you'll do the fan videos and that works great. 
But as you're kind of developing on the platform, we're going to be able to start bringing business deals, you know, in-person bookings, uh, virtual concerts, you know, whatever it is they're looking to do. Once we have that information, we can start to sell it to brands and it's been working out really well. Yeah, I got in under the wire there because I had Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick do a thing where he He's did the intro. The oh, yeah. He did an intro for another podcast that I do. And he was playing his guitar and he was like, we were Jay's first concert, August 13th, 1977. Isn't that right, Jay? You know, it was it was just really charming and really cool. And you know what? I would have paid more for it. You know, not that I'm monetizing it, but, you know, it is technically a business. The one that I'm kind of waiting on right now is Mike and I are really big Minnesota Viking fans and their their on air announcer, Paul Allen, is on uh, on Cameo. And he's he's kind of taken a break for the last couple of years, but I followed him. So hopefully if and when he goes back on, it'll, it'll notify me, but um, I will, I will talk with our, our sports teams today and just, just get the insight. <laughs> tell tell my, I, 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 yeah, There's I, a I customer need, waiting. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a good point too. Like, I, you know, I don't even bring up like artists can come on. They don't always have to be on, right. They can turn off their availability whenever they want. You know, if you're going to the studio for a week and you're like, I just need a clear head space. Uh, let me just turn this off. What's really cool too is like, you know, like you said, if they're off, we'll collect any email from fans that want that sign up. And so the second they turn it back on, they have this demand that's like inherently just built into the app itself. They don't have yeah. to post on social media. They can just, you know, turn it on and the app does the work. Yeah. Come on, Paul I, Allen, you if know, you're listening. Come uh, yeah. Come we're, we're manifesting it. I think, uh, I think uh, there's, uh, I think we'll make it happen. A few right. years, a few years ago, I had booked um, Jojo Siwa to do uh, a birthday greeting for my little daughter she's a huge Jojo fan. And I mean, she's got the right to do this, but I booked it. And then she's like, Nope, I got too many. I'm turning this off. Not going to do anymore. I mean, you gotta, gotta understand some of these celebrities. Yes. If they turn it on, they're probably getting a thousand bookings in the blink of an eye. Um, yeah. so and yes, that's... I mean, from an artist standpoint, you do have control over this. You're not going to wake up, and be forced to record 10,000 cameos when that's not what you were planning to do. Absolutely. And, you know, we have artists that do that too. Like Rob Thomas is a really good example. He will come on and we, we call it throttling. So he'll say, okay, I'm going to do 20 messages this week. I have, you know, in my schedule, I have time. He knows how long it takes me to do a cameo. Like, okay. On Thursday, I have an hour. Okay. In an hour I can do, you know, whatever it is. So he, he tends to do 20. I think he'll probably, you could probably do 20 about half an hour. So whatever it is, he knows he's got a free half hour. And once 20, you know, we, we set it up in the app, once 20 are booked, it closes and shuts off. And, you know, as soon as he comes back, anyone that's waiting gets, gets one then. So, you know, we want to make this so that, you know, this is never going to be someone's main, you know, priority ever. I mean, there are some, right? Like Brian Bumgarner, he's Kevin from the office. Like this is his main job at this point. But, I, I, I read something about that. He is like the highest earner on yeah. cameo something like that <laughs> he's a pro i mean he it's insane um he just knows what he's doing and he loves it and he's just made it a big priority and you know that's great but you know for 99 percent of folks that are on this is something that's on the side right and i would tell musicians all day like how many hours are you spending on tour like chilling on the tour bus or in the green room or just you know putzing around like that is the perfect opportunity to take a fan into that world, you know, show them that, that space and, you know, invite them there. And, you know, fans absolutely love that. Yeah. So, so Adam, talk to us about um, what Cameo just announced today as we're recording this. I think it's, it's Cameo live. Yeah. So it's, it's private live. We, we played around with a few different, you know, live types. I think that was, a, you know, early on, we, we realized there was a big kind of demand for that as well. You know, cameos are amazing, but there is a layer of, you know, it's, you're not quite, yeah, it's not interactive. And so, yeah. So one of our products, so the live, which is we've rolled it out. Um, it's probably been out for like a month or so now we're really officially pushing it out. But, um, the one before that was actually called cameo calls, which is still around works really great. It's like a virtual meet and greet. An artist will tell us, okay, at this date, at this time, I want to talk to X amount of fans. It's going to cost Y dollars. I'm going to speak to each fan for Z minutes. Um, is that like a zoom kind of thing, a shared screen so it's kind of thing typically built right in the app? Okay. It's built right in the app. It's, it's, uh, it's really easy. They kind of input that information. They can go live whenever they like, if they want to just do it on the spot, but they can also schedule it out so that, um, fans can purchase tickets ahead of time. You know, we launch it, the time comes the, the artist goes live in the app, fans queue up in the app, and then, you know, they're able to submit a question or two. Once the queue is filled, the artist begins the cameo call as it's called. 
and they speak to each fan one by one. At the end, it gets a photo, like sort of photo booth photo, um, and then they move on to the next fan. But in that time, you know, they get to, it's like a FaceTime. You see your face, you see the artist, you can chat whatever you want. Um, good example, like for Father's Day this year, uh, I had Oteil Burbage from Dead & Co. He wanted to, he didn't, he was a little bit weary about doing normal cameos. Um, he, he didn't like just being recorded. He wanted to, you know, actually be speaking with fans. So we decided to, you know, roll it out with him. So for Father's Day, we kind of sold it like, you know, this is the perfect gift for your, if your dad's a, you know, deadhead or like loves dead and co, this is the perfect gift. He did it for five minutes too. So he really got to actually chat. Um, and he's just a super thoughtful, insightful guy. He's got a podcast also too, uh, which is great. Awesome. But, um, so he did it, you know, he, he did like 20 fans. It was like hundred bucks a pop, but you know, again, five minutes that you got to chat with him on father's day, he went through each one talking philosophy or whatever it is. And, you know, for the, for the dad, it was just, you know, next level present, but you know, he, he did a great job. He absolutely loved it. Uh, and you know, that's how he does. And then he turns it off and that's how he interacts with us. And so that's like another option. If you're more into the sort of one-to-one, yeah. um, interaction that way, you could do that. And the next iteration was the private live. So, um, you know, a good example I like for the private live is like, let's say you're having your fantasy draft, right? You're doing your fantasy football draft. Um, and you wanted like Scott Hansen from the red zone to actually be there with you guys and, you know, talk, you know, maybe he's roasting somebody or congratulating the winner from last year, but he's actually there with you, like on a zoom and, you know, interacting with everybody. That's kind of what private live is all about. So, um, again, our set a, pr a price for that. They're, they're 10 minute calls. Um, it's up to them how much they want to charge. We facilitate everything on the back end. So we sell tickets ahead of time. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This it's actually not tickets. So this, this product is more, um, the private lives, which is this iteration that we rolled out, is actually an art. A fan would say, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna book you just like a cameo," and they provide like four or five times that that, that they're available. That would work. The artist then selects a time that makes the most sense for them. If they want to do it, they lock it in. It locks in, and that's how you know it happens. They they do the live. Um, they get to chat. You know, ten minutes. Some people just do like a Zoom with their favorite artist and just that's you know, so cool. Maybe you're talking about your favorite record or getting some of your favorite tour stories, um, you know, whatever it is, but you get the 10 minutes, the zoom call, and then, you know, the artist does the 10 minutes and then they get paid after and the same split, 75, 25. So really cool, a little bit more interactive. Um, still it's yeah. totally on the artist terms. They decide the time based on, you know, what's supplied and, uh, they pick the price as well. Wow, you guys have really evolved, uh, <laughs> from the beginning. I mean, all these things I've, I wasn't even aware of a lot of these things. Talk about the music side of it. I'm sure you see all sorts of different types of cameos. What What are some of the more interesting or innovative or funny or whatever? What are people doing on the music side that's different from just your basic, quick cameo recording? Yeah, it's a good question. I And again, this is like, I eat, sleep and read cameo music. So it's almost <laughs> like an overwhelming type of question. But, um, you know, we have artists taken in so many different directions. Like, you know, I've had a lot of artists come to me and, you know, ask like, can we do personalized songs? Like, can, you know, like Max Bemis is a good example of Say Anything. It's a really popular sort of emo pop punk band in the you know mid aughts, um, huge following. Fans absolutely love him. He's a really thoughtful and sensitive guy and he loves making songs. And so he came to me and was like, can we do it? Can I make personalized songs? And so, you know, we figured out the best way to do it. Um, you know, sometimes he'll, you know, he'll advertise specifically he's doing the song. So he'll raise his price to do those specific songs, you know, for a week or something like that. Um, folks will be like, you know, can you do a live in the glory of love? But can you mention my fiance, Joseph? He's like a huge fan. He'll lose his mind if you say his name at this part, Right. So Max will do that. He, he loves doing that. I mean, it's a much higher payout because it's a personalized song, but it's, you know, still in the app. So it's super easy for him. Um, I've had artists do like auto-tune cameos. So like DJs, like this DJ I work with, his name's Wookie. Uh, his concept was, you know, I have, I've got all this really, really cool recording equipment. Um, let me uh, do a really fun, you know, auto-tune song, right? And even further, like we have, uh, you know, ways of plugging in creatively into like an album rollout or an album promo, right? So there's a rising musician um and uh she came to me she has a really popular song on tiktok called uh you only text or please don't text me when you're drunk uh and she's super duper cool really really great vocalist the song is blowing up uh and our whole concept was like okay what if we had uh, people like send you their like you know uh, drunk text they've gotten and you can sing them <laughs> and then they can send them to the person and be like don't text me this stuff anymore. You know, something like that. So, you know, again, wow. we were playing with this sort of narrative around what the album is. 
there's a huge, huge chance for uh, for vir- virality with these things, right? They spread yeah, all the time. Yeah. Like you might have seen, like when uh, poor Smokey said Chanuka instead of Hanukkah. I don't know. Did you see that moment? Yeah, yeah, he's... yeah. yeah. And we, you know, we and love but still, I mean, the next, yeah, the next day he was the number one trending person on Twitter, and you know, it's just it's it's really really good visibility. And like Mark McGrath did a a breakup cameo and was viral the next day. And so you know, there's really really fun ways to play with this tool and create these special moments so that you know you're highlighting the sort of personality you have that you know maybe you don't get to really translate in social media all that much or in you know your music or in touring, but you know, cameo is really a great space for you to kind of flex that stuff and um, you know just have fun with it. So. Yeah, it's a huge spectrum of how <laughs> folks are using it. And, you know, we're always trying to come up with creative ways. Like, Guar is a great example. You know, they, oh, yeah. they, Guar. Yep. They, uh, they'll do full band cameos. So we came up with like, hey, they have about 30 minutes before, you know, when they're all in costume, before they go and play a set. Like, could we could we do cameos in that time with them full in costume? Um, and so we did like a limited run with that where we figured out, you know, when they could actually do them. Uh, and so you get all the guys in there like crazy, you get to spitting blood, doing the cameos, but like, you know, really sp- like mentioning they're, 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 they're a top fan. Um, and so those are, those are really great too. So we have all, you know, sometimes bands will come on and do them like via zoom, like less than Jake did that recently where they kind of all came on and, you know, they did it almost like this, uh, which works really well too. So, you know, the tool is really flexible. It's really iterative. Like we can be flexible. We love having fun. We have lots of, you know, tools on our end between like our socials and newsletters that go out and our fan base that we can really kind of put some weight behind it and, you know, elevate these creative ideas so that, um, you know, we get extra promotion on a new single or a tour or something like that. Yeah. I, I, I would, I would add to the, you can do it on zoom that that's how I do it for our, right. our podcast exactly right. because we've got four co-hosts that are scattered across the country. So once a week we get together, we record a zoom of the cameo and in the cameo app instead of hitting the record button there's an upload button and you just upload the video you've already done so yeah i mean if you're the type of person who actually wants to do a very well edited prepared professional video go for it you can edit it up and then you just upload that and that becomes the cameo absolutely yeah we have you know folks like in bands like ice nine kills um, you know, Spencer will do it in makeup or Justin and, you know, these Justin Morrow's the drummer will, or the bassist will, you know, do his, he'll, you know, he'll set a price higher, do them in makeup. Really cool one actually that I'm launching next week. Um, this guy, uh, Teflon Sega, he is a virtual artist. So, um, basically his artist, you know, the persona really only exists in the metaverse, right? So he's a person, but in the way in which he presents as an artist, he is like an, basically like almost like, um, like a, uh, like he almost looks like an avatar, right? Like he's right. purple, he's got this really cool hair. He puts out music all the same, it's really great, um, but that's his whole persona. And so his team came to me and were like, we love this, I- this idea, you know, what can we do here? Like what would be really, really cool? And so, you know, now we're able to do these like really, really interesting, like um, virtual cameos for lack of a better expression where he can snap his fingers and he's in a room full of monsters or he's, a, on a gladiator's uh you know chariot saying the cameo just like happy birthday danny snaps his fingers and he's in a you know a, a donut shop in hell like, whatever it is whatever you can come up with this guy can actually create these videos that you know not only are the words and what he's saying you know personalized to what you want but the entire background the entire experience of this cameo is completely generated by you know whatever your imagination wants so that one is really really cool i think it's probably the first of its we've done like thomas the tank engine or we, we have some virtual characters but this one will really be the first, um, you know, artist that's really taken cameo into the metaverse. So, you know, we can all, we, we've already gotten there. So the, you know, the sky is the limit of how artists want to take it. And we do find that, you know, the more creative, or, you know, the more you provide the why to the fans, um, typically the more successful the, the campaign will be. That is absolutely amazing. I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I just love how cameos evolved since the beginning here. You, you, you know, it was just get a quick little, pay somebody to record a video for you. And now it's become so much more, I mean, you, 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 you mentioned it briefly, but I mean, you can, you can kind of become an agent for somebody and book them speaking engagements and personal appearances. And um, 
it's, merch. We, we purchased only, a, a merch company called Represent. They're the only venture backed merch company in the game. Amazing, amazing, cool company. Um, nice. Now they are under us. So, you know, they're, we're supplying them with folks that, that need, you know, that opportunities to, to create merch. They can sell merch directly from their Cameo profile, um, Very cool. create white pages that are, you know, distinct. So you know, at the end of the day, like what we really want to be is, you know, the first call for direct to fan monetization, right? If you're an artist and you want yeah. to figure out, you know, this is what I'm doing, but I know I could be, you know, funding this in a better way. Um, we want to help you sort of optimize and, and, you know, point you in the right direction. Well, you're taking experiences to a whole different level with, with the jobs that Mike and I do, we're involved in experiences. For example, one of my artists, if you go to their website, they'll record with you. They'll write a song with you. They'll do handwritten lyrics for you. One of them will play D and D with you. One of them will knit you a scarf. And I mean, these different experiences, and it seems like that's all being kind of rolled up into TikTok as this experiential thing. And you're really only limited by your own imagination. Absolutely. I mean, live experiences are next. That's currently in, in the, in the roadmap. Um, you know, could you have, you know, an artist come and, and participate, like you said, in your D and D or, you know, something really crazy like that. Um, that's in the roadmap and that, that should be out shortly. We're really excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see where cameo continues yeah. to grow and, and move yeah. towards because, you're right. It, it's no longer just about recording a simple video. I mean, that's what everything was built upon. Yeah. But <laughs> this isn't your grandmother's cameo. This is uh... <laughs> exactly. It's a whole different world of, of what can be done and the potential revenue streams. And I, and I just keep going back to, it is so easy. I mean, you know, one of the things Jay and I always deal with, and I'm sure you do, Adam, is, you know, artists sometimes are not the most technically adept they just want to you know they just want to do what they do great and that's music and when you throw all these other things in front of them they kind of like well sure i'd love to make the money but boy i don't know if i can figure this out and how to do it and i can tell you cameo is drop dead stupid simple to do and dick van dyke does them i mean i, I think anybody can can do cameos <laughs> at this point. i mean yeah to you to your <laughs> point i mean you, you get an email that says you've been booked and then you open up the app and, you know, there's there's the name of the person. Here's what the reason is. Here's the script they've given you. Obviously, you can ad lib and go beyond the script. But, you, you know, one of the things art, artists always want to be, well, to just tell me what to say. Just tell me what I got to record. You know, to tell an artist to ad lib sometimes is the hardest thing in the world. I mean, I don't get it sometimes, but. It's totally. all there, right there in front of you, like you said, in a built-in teleprompter. You're re you're just reading it, and hopefully you get a little more personal on it. But you click a button to start, you click a button to stop, and that's it. It's done. And as soon as you totally. send it, the money is transferred to you. Exactly, and and you know, I, I, the same on the same note too. It's you know, we have a lot of artists that will say, you know, they hate social media. You know, they they hate all the negativity around it. Just having to yeah. put up, make content all the time. It's so annoying, but you know, with Cameo, it's like you have it's user co-created content. It's 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 or fan co-created content, right? You have fans are telling you exactly what to say. It's all love. You know, no one is going to pay fifty dollars, hundred dollars, whatever it is, to tell you your music sucks, right? It's always going to be the super fan or the, right. the son of the super fan or the brother of the super fan who's just coming here to tell you, like, this person adores you and you are the reason they are able to make it out of the pandemic. You know, and so having those moments too where it's all love. It's all positivity uh, is another big selling point because there's not a lot of places, you know, like that anymore. And and yeah. it is important to just remind everybody if a request comes in that for whatever reason, you don't feel comfortable, what they're asking you to say, you might know the person and you don't want to do because every every artist has fans where they're like, we got to avoid these fans. Totally. Fun you can that, just sure. refuse it. Done. Totally. No, yeah, yeah, there's never a penalty for not doing one. We have a really great customer service team that can reach out on our ends. The artist never has to deal with it. Great. Artists always have a, a rep on our side. So that's oftentimes me for the musicians. Um, who's the point person, anything they need. I'm a phone call away always. Um, and so they're always supported. It's always super easy. It's always what they want. And, you know, like I said, there's no contract. There's no cost to doing it. They don't always have to be on. It's really flexible. So you know, again, like I said, most of the job these days is just educating and getting the info out there. And once, you know, it clicks, they're like, hmm, this sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Well, Adam, where can 
people go to, to sign up, to learn more? How do they reach out if they've got questions? Absolutely. So, you know, I guess the easiest would be my, my just sending me an email. My email is a Ramo. So a R a M O S at cameo.com. I do everything music at cameo. So always happy to chat. If somebody has an idea for rolling one out or, you know, needs help with something or wants to just, just talk through what could work. That's always a great outlet. Um, obviously visit our website. We have it all broken down into categories. So if you're interested in perusing a certain category, see who's up, you know, feel free to type in metal, type in rap, type in country. You can see our whole roster there. Um, social media as well. We are C-A-M-E-O on everything, TikTok, Twitter, um, Instagram, all of the above. I'm on Instagram as well. I'm underscore Adam, Adam Ramos. So just underscore A-D-A-M-R-A-M-O-S. Always happy to connect there as well. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, generally speaking, those are the best ways to go about it. There's, you know, a place to enroll as talent on the website. We have an enrollment channel that, that, that artists can, um, enroll that way. Um, but shooting a meeting email is usually a quicker way to get started. So definitely recommend that approach. Again, it's A-R-A-M-O-S at cameo.com. So great uh, talking with you, Adam. Thanks so much for joining us today. And I, I hope you'll join us again, because I have a feeling there's going to be some more, uh, iterations, uh, and more improvements that we're going to be able to talk about. Absolutely. It was such a pleasure. Next time I'll come with some, you know, heavy firepower. I'll get some funny <laughs> cameos to there you go. into it. There I think that'll be the next level. Yeah. So Adam, right. thank you. This was this was awesome. Absolutely. Thanks for the time again. And like I said, if anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always happy to chat about cameos. Visit discmakers.com to place an order for 100 or more CDs. And when you check out, use promo code FREEBIZ and get free shipping up to a $150 value. I got to tell you, Cameo is not what you no. think it is. No. And 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 I say that because I think a lot of people have a very early impression of what Cameo is. Trust me, I've used it as a fan and I'm using it as talent. It is not it like you said, it's not your grandmother's Cameo anymore. No, 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 no. I didn't know that they had the functionality and the innovations that they had. Some of it I'd, I'd heard, but this goes beyond what I thought their capabilities are. And they, they're evolving. They're changing. And it's, uh, it's really cool. It, it, it really is. It's, it, it, it is now at the point where, honestly, and it doesn't matter how big or small your your fan base is everybody should have a cameo account. You should have one of these set up. If there's a fan that wants to hire you for whatever your fee is. I mean, my, my podcast, we do them for five bucks because we, yeah, we just want to make it a charity, but right? we're hundred percent supporting a charity. So we're not doing That's it awesome. to raise money for us, but I mean, set up a cameo for five bucks. And if a fan does it, God bless them and God bless you. There's no, there's no stigma to being on no, Cameo none. like there used to be years ago. I mean, I remember talking to a client who's like, yeah, but isn't that kind of where you go to die? It's like, yeah. no, not at all. Not no. at all. I mean, as Adam said, you know, John Bon Jovi came on and, and in a matter of hours raised $150,000 for his charity. Yeah. Every major and we're not talking just music because there's movie stars, TV stars, there's Sports. YouTube stars, there's podcasters, there's writers, there's poets, there's you name everything. it. Everything is out there now. Politic yes, you can hire a politician to record a cameo for you. I don't know if that cameo means they're now telling the truth or they're lying, but one way or another, you got a politician doing a plug for you. <laughs> um there are so many potential ways to generate revenue now off of Cameo and, and their expansion into going live is so exciting and it's not plastered all over the place, but if you are in demand enough, like I said, they can kind of rep you. They can book you to personal appearances, speaking engagements. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great platform. It is. So I, 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 I encourage everybody to reach out to Adam. Um, if you've got Sign questions, you, you can, you can hit me up as well. I've been using this for, I don't know, six, eight months now as talent and as getting artists signed up. So if you've got questions, I'll be happy to answer them as well. 
um, it's very easy to get onboarded and up and running. I mean, there's no reason you couldn't be on board and generating uh, revenue in 24 hours. Yeah. Great show. And you know what else I find interesting is the out of the box thinking of like using this for album releases. And I, I like the fact that they're open to thinking of stuff like that. You got an yeah. interesting album release campaign. Maybe it's tied into a cameo, maybe yeah. a video yeah. premiere on cam. I don't know. Maybe How- your tour announce and you can tie your tour into it and those dates and fans and the, you're limited only by your imagination. Yeah. I mean, as he was talking, as you asked him about interesting cameos, I was like, wonder if anybody's ever done a cameo like live on stage in a concert. How cool would that be? Yeah. You're not at the show, but in between songs, a quick 30 second cameo is recorded and your artist is calling you out from Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Maybe it goes up on the big screen, you know, for some big donator for a charity. I mean, it could be anything. Yeah. 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 So put the thinking cap on. This is, this is, (laughs) you know, Jay and I always talk about experiences. Cameo is all about selling and delivering the experience. Yeah. They make it easy. And yep. it's a very, if you've never done it, I encourage you just as a fan, go find somebody. You'll find somebody you like. Yeah. An old TV star, an old movie star, an old music star, a sports star, whatever. Hire them. Buy it's one for a friend fr- or a relative. Cool. Or a relative. Wish him it's happy birthday. Cool. It you really know? is pretty I cool. I mentioned that I had the soup Nazi. Wish my dad happy birthday. It was an awesome gift. And uh, I encourage people. Yeah, to you're do now that. the favorite son. Yes, I am. (laughs) All right, everybody. So one more time, a quick shout out and thanks to Bruce and everybody at Hypebot and bands in town. And of course, one more uh, mention of artist community over at bands in town. Come join us. Head over to bandsintown.musicbizweeklypodcast.com. Let's talk about Cameo and experiences. And have you had an experience with Cameo? Either buying one or recording them for fans. I'd like to know what you you felt. What was it? What? How did it go for you? Any issues? Any concerns? Any ideas that would make it more interesting? Let's talk. Let's talk about cameo and selling video experiences. Um, and of course, to our sponsors, Bandzoogle.com and Discmakers.com. Thank you so much for your continued support. That's it, everybody. We'll see you next week. Musicbizweeklypodcast.com. Subscribe on YouTube, follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. For Music Biz Weekly, provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.